Our final speaker for the day uh, is a really interesting guy. I uh, first saw him at the Calgary Foundation, uh, the Vital Signs release, um, and uh, he was speaking about, about happiness and what, what drives us in terms of our happiness and how people see happiness. Um, and he was just a, he was a passionate and remarkable speaker. And I said he has to be part of the F-Series because that is such a, a great piece of, of work and research that he does. So uh, he's, uh, again, our, our final component of our UFC contingent here. He's an associate professor here uh, in the Faculty of Arts and um, has got some very cool research topics, spans happiness, um, and he's written a book on creativity. Uh, he's going to share all that with you. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Patrick Finn. Thank you so much. Testing. Can you hear me? You can hear me. Okay, great. Um, okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let some slides scroll by. And what that means is that I'm going to kind of jump around and I'm going to have to look back there to see where I am. That's how I sort of keep myself organized. I just, I don't like to put things in my hands like clickers because I like to wave my arms around and shout. Um, but the good news is I will speak for less than 14 minutes. Go. I'd like to begin with an expression of gratitude. I think any time you get a chance to meet with people and exchange ideas, it's extraordinarily uh, fortunate. It's, it's kind of everything I live for, really, is research and teaching. And so the ability to be here with you today is tremendous. And I want to sort of start by saying thank you. Thank you very much. So, if question. Unfortunately for you, I'm not as clever as the people that have come before me, and so what I'm going to do is simplify everything. I'm going to ask one if question, and I'm going to ask it 15 times. I'm going to make it my if question, I'm going to make it your if question, and it's this. What if everything is wonderful? What if everything is wonderful? I think that we spend a lot of time getting together and beginning from a base position that is, we've got a bunch of problems. What are we going to do about it? I need to be a problem solver. I need to be a, a critical thinker. There's all these troubles. How are we ever going to deal with it? But what if everything is wonderful? And there's just some exceptions. And we just need to grow that wonder, and we'd have an even better world. So just as a thought experiment with me, spend a little bit of time and see what it would be like if maybe everything was wonderful. Wonderful in your life, wonderful in your work, wonderful in your city, wonderful in everything that we do and everything that is around us. And I'll try and convince you why we should feel this way. What if everything is wonderful because of the types of things we know about the human body and the human mind? What if everything is wonderful because what medical science is telling us about our brains, about what we can do? I'm someone that's interested in performance. I work in theater and music and the arts, and I'm interested in getting better at things. I'm interested in training people to get better at things, to become more creative and to use more of their minds. We now know about neuroplasticity. We know how to make you smarter. We know how to improve your memory. We know how to make you healthier physically. There's incredible information available to us if we want to become the best versions of ourselves. What a magnificent time to be alive when we have the benefit of all this knowledge. It can help us decide what to learn, what to read, and what to do with our lives in order to make the, the absolute best decisions for ourselves. What if everything is wonderful because of globalization? Globalization is this word that a lot of people use, and they'll, they'll say it as if it's a pejorative, as if it's a negative. They'll say, oh, globalization is going to take my job. Globalization is going to make this stuff move over there. Um, but it's the globe. And the last time I checked, the people on the other side of the globe are just people on the other side of the globe. And so what if globalization is magnificent? What if it's the reunification of our family for the first time? What if it's getting to hear the stories of all kinds of people we've never met before? What if it's getting to share our stories with them? What if it's getting to share our best ideas, their best ideas, and finally just join hands with our brothers and sisters? They've got songs like that. Why don't we actually do it? What if globalization is a fantastic opportunity for us to become the family that we always really were designed to be? What if everything is wonderful because we live in the age of information? What if everything is wonderful because this is the moment of the greatest change in the way human beings communicate in the history of the world? I will say quite a few things while I'm up here, but no one can question me on this. This is the moment of the greatest change in the way human beings communicate in the history of the world. Now, you give me a time machine and say, hey, when do you want to live? I'll pick the time that has that change. It's extraordinary. 
the way that we can communicate, the way that Transit can get his music out there through iTunes, the way that people can tweet to friends. You can check. Maybe, maybe your mom is sick and you want to send a message to her. You can Skype to family that's outside of the, the city or a long distance away. It's changing everything in terms of the way that we operate and the way that we connect. What if everything is wonderful because of women? We talk a lot about the fact that... <laughs> I'm not one of them, so I can't really applaud. Um, the, we talk about all of the advances that have been made in society, and they're magnificent since, uh, since the middle of the last century. And we got better at, at understanding that differences between races are, are really sort of just in the mind. And we're more integrated than we've ever been before. And we talk about those, and we should, and we should celebrate them and keep working on them. But the biggest transformation has been the more full incorporation of women into the workforce to free them up to make the decisions that they want to make, and our society is better for it. There are more women in university now than men. There are more women in the workforce in the United States than men. There are more managers that are women than men in the United States, and I believe we are better for it, and we need to, need to extend that. What if everything is wonderful because this is the greatest generation in the history of the world? What if the millennials, the generation that I'm now teaching, are the greatest generation in the history of the world. They're more diverse than any generation before. They're more gender integrated than any generation before. They're in the middle of this new technological revolution and they're politically active. More millennials turned out to vote than seniors in the last federal election in the United States and they weren't even all eligible to vote at that point. Once the whole cohort goes through, there'll be an incredible voting force and they're interested. Now naysayers say, oh, they've got an entitlement problem they're, they're too attached to their families, and they expect the world to give them some sort of beautiful future. It should. It should. What if everything is wonderful because it's easier now to be a Renaissance man? And I say man because that term Renaissance man is the term I want to refer to, but I mean a Renaissance person. And what does it mean to be called a Renaissance person? I've had that happen with me. I'm somebody who's interested in a lot of areas, and I do a lot of jobs, and so people will say, hey, you're kind of a Renaissance man. It's kind of a polite way to say, wow, why can't you hold a job? Um, but, it's, but it's meant to be nice, and what it means is we're good at a whole variety of things. And all of a sudden it occurred to me, as somebody who works in education, shouldn't we all be Renaissance men? Shouldn't we all be taking mathematics and language and dance and philosophy and engineering and science? Shouldn't we all be aiming to be that robust, realized mind, full potential? Because I really think that we're entering a new renaissance, and I think that Calgary is the center of it, and that's why I'd be in Calgary. What if everything is wonderful because we take a kind of a, a good attitude to history in this town? I think, that, I, I think that history is really interesting in Calgary because we kind of have this yearly celebration of our history that's, that's kind of a party and kind of almost ironic about its history. That's fascinating to me. And I'll, I'll tell you why. I'm interested in creativity. I'm interested in innovation and entrepreneurship and, and all that people can be. That's what fascinates me. And I think that one thing that we have to watch for that is sometimes the misuse of history. We've probably all been at that meeting where you're sitting there and you go, wow, this is a great idea, and that's a great idea. And some of us say, well, hang on, though. We can't do that because uh, we have always done it this other way. Well, sometimes just because you've done something for a long time means, doesn't mean you should continue it. And my example for that, I apologize if it's rude, is we used to go to the bathroom outdoors. Just because you used to do it doesn't mean you have to continue. What if everything is wonderful because we're watching more cat videos? We're watching a lot more cat videos and people are complaining that we're spending too much time idling away watching cat videos rather than the news. But I'd like to ask this question. What is the news? I'm someone that consumes quite a bit of it. We get up in the morning, we check the news, we get news updates, we watch the news at dinner, we watch the news before we go to bed. But it seems to me that more and more the news is focusing on a tiny percentage of human beings and their worst behaviors and playing those stories over and over and over again and giving us the message that the world is full of dangerous, frightening people. It's not. It's 99.9% .9 full of loving, wonderful people. And so I believe that if you watch more cat videos, you're getting a more accurate representation of the world than if you watch the news. What if everything is wonderful because people stand up when governments are silly? I, started to tr I tried to think of an exception to the rule, but I think that federal politicians are silly everywhere in the world. I think that they're probably trying their best. I'm not one of these people that says any one party is great or anything. I think they're all uniformly broken. I think that they're trying their best, 
But I think our systems are sort of collapsing. And I don't think that we, I'm not one of these people that's saying, oh, we should try socialism or democracy or whatever these types of things are. I think those are old models and we need to do better. We need to incentivize working together towards future things and not getting stuck talking about what we won't do. There's too many meetings of what we won't do. So it's a good sign when people stand up. It's messy, but freedom is not neat. What if it's a wonderful world because we have librarians? We're a stone's throw from the Taylor Family Digital Library. It's a beacon in this country. It's an incredibly good sign. Why? Well, we're in the information age. So, what's going on in the information age? In the first group of people, we heard a couple of people saying they're overwhelmed with information. People are overwhelmed with information. If I ask anybody out here, nobody's going to come to me and say, hey, Pat, listen, I need much more information. I'm just not getting enough information. We need better information. Well, I've got an answer for you, friends. There's this group of folks that are experts at collecting information, storing information, and then doling it out in useful packages. They're librarians. We need to celebrate them. We need to do exactly what we've done with the Taylor Family Digital Library and emphasize that aspect of our society in order to guarantee freedom of access to information. What if everything is wonderful because of the Calgary mayoral election? And here's why. I mentioned the silly politicians. I'm a positive guy. I'm an optimistic. I'm a happy guy. And so I'm not going to mention politics unless I've got an offer. And I don't have a solution, but I don't need one. They gave us one. I think that these people should be given the medal to the city, them and the people that ran in the last mayoral election. Why? It was an election that stayed positive. It was an election that the national news called an election in full sentences. They talked about it in the news in the States, in Europe, and all across the country. Why? Because people that cared about this city gave their vision and did what they did because of their love and vision for Calgary. I had students that worked on all three of these campaigns. They loved the experience they had, and they will carry that with them for the rest of their lives. What if everything is wonderful when you have vision? I think the most common word I've heard today from a variety of speakers is vision, have a vision, have a vision. Well, I'm here at the university, and I love university. I'm so happy, actually. I tell my students this. Sometimes I'm walking along, and I'm dressed like this, and I break into a run. I get so excited, I just I, I can't help myself. But it's even better to be at this university now because when I walk to work, I come up the street and there's this big sign that says, eyes high. We're going to be a top five research institution by 2016. I love that. I'm ready to go for that. Why? Because human beings at their best are looking to do something better. They're looking to go over the next hill. They're looking to help each other because everything is wonderful and we just want to grow that. And all you need to do is get to vision and get away from saying, here's what I won't do and here's my deal breaker. Now, I know what you're saying. Boy, you're right. He isn't that clever. He's already showed us that slide. But there's a reason for it. You see, I tried to come up with my if question. I could only come up with one, and it's, it is the question, what if everything is wonderful? And so I thought, well, I better come up with an image to describe what wonderful is. So I Googled wonderful, and I think that this picture works. It is full of wonder. It's got mountains. It's got trees. It's got reflective water. It's got fantastic lighting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Banff, Alberta. We live in the middle of wonderful. We are a species for whom the very operation of our planet provides us with aesthetic and spiritual joy. We look at a sunset, we experience joy. We look at a sunrise, we experience joy. The very functioning of the way in which we live makes us feel better. And so, I will end where I began by thanking you for giving me time. It's your most precious resource. Thanking the organizers, thanking the Chamber of Commerce for coming up with such a tremendous idea to be here and to share ideas. Have yourselves a wonderful day.